terrible. Okay. Are you here to make a chocolate cake with me? Fudge. Hey guys, it, ooh. Hey y'all, it's Hannah, and today I'm gonna show you how to make my classic chocolate cake recipe. I'm gonna take you through my process, step by step, how I prep everything, the ingredients I use, how I bake it and decorate it. So, let's go. So we're gonna start with our flour, sugar, cocoa powder, and then our salt, baking powder, and baking soda. We're gonna whisk that up so there are no more clumps left. Set that bowl to the side and get a new one. Gonna add your milk, your oil, pure vanilla extract, and eggs. Then you're gonna whisk that up and set that bowl to the side. For this next part, you could use just a cup of hot coffee. I prefer to use Trader Joe's instant coffee. You mix in about a heaping tablespoon of that with a cup of boiling water. Then we're gonna add our wet mixture to our dry ingredients. Stir it up just a little bit, and then we're gonna add our hot coffee to the mixture. Whisk that up until it is all mixed up. It is going to be super thin, so do not freak out. It is supposed to be this runny. Okay, now we are going to set that to the side and get our parchment paper out. It is very important to line the bottom of your cake pans with parchment. It helps the cake pop out very cleanly rather than it breaking apart. So what I do is I trace parchment paper with an X-Acto knife to get an exact fit. You're gonna spray the heck out of it with some Pam and then place the parchment at the bottom of the cake pan. Here I am adding cocoa powder. You're gonna dust the sides of that. Again, it just helps the cake release so much easier from the pan. You're gonna dust it around the edges and tap off the excess. Okay, now we are ready to divide the batter up in between the cake pans. I like using a scale to weigh each cake pan out to make sure that I get an exact amount in each one so they bake very similarly. Uh, you don't have to be this OCD about it, but it has helped me out a ton. Here I'm knocking each cake pan one or two times against the hard surface to get some air bubbles out. Then we're gonna bake these cakes at 350 degrees for 35 minutes, making sure to rotate the cakes halfway through to ensure even baking. Now we get to start making the frosting. It is very, very important to make sure that your butter is at room temperature, not melted, okay, and not cold. You want room temperature butter, then you're gonna add your powdered sugar, your vanilla extract, make sure to use pure vanilla extract, brings out the flavor so much better. Then your milk and your dash of salt. We're going to beat it with a mixer. Honestly, you, you can't really overbeat it, so just beat it until it's nice and fluffy. Do not add too much milk to your frosting. Do you see this? See how thick that is? That is what you want. All right, now it's time to see if our cakes are done. The top of the cake should spring back lightly when touched. And when you insert a toothpick into the center of the cake, it should look like this. It should not come out clean. It should be a little bit fudgy and have slight crumbs on it. If it does come out clean, it means it's been overbaked. So you'll want to reintroduce moisture back into the cake by adding some simple syrup. Okay, now it's time for my favorite part. We get to decorate the cake. So you'll load up your piping bag. I always use a round tip when filling the cakes. I put a little bit down on a cake board to secure the first layer. I will note that I let my cake layers chill. Um, you want to make sure that they are at least cooled to room temperature. For best results, I recommend chilling them in the refrigerator for a short amount of time, even like 20 to 30 minutes before decorating your cake. By using a piping bag to put my layers on, that helps ensure even amounts of frosting in every slice of cake. So that's very helpful. Uh, this is the initial layer, which you can call the crumb coat layer, where you first line up a bunch of frosting. So you'll see me coating the cake fully in frosting. And then we are going to scrape the sides with a bench knife or a pastry cutter. You can order them on Amazon. They're, they're actually really cheap and I will have a lot of the tools that I've used linked down below. This part is really important. After we smooth out our sides initially, you are gonna wanna take your cake and pop it in the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes. The longer you can leave your cake in the refrigerator, the better results you will have. I usually leave it in for 30 minutes to an hour. And then you go ahead and add your second coat of buttercream, making sure to coat all sides of it, scrape it clean. We're not too worried about the top edges for this cake since it will be a drip cake. So just take your cake scraper and scrape off the top edges of the cake like so. So we are ready to drip on our ganache. For my ganache drip recipe, I use equal parts chocolate chips to heavy cream. So I use 60% Ghirardelli dark chocolate. I do three ounces of that with three ounces of heavy cream. And then you're going to microwave that in, obviously a microwave safe bowl for 15 second intervals mixing in between each. You wanna make sure again, your cake is chilled while you are dripping this ganache on top of it. 
because your ganache will be, it shouldn't be boiling hot, but it should be pretty hot in order for it to drip down quickly and get that beautiful glossy look. So I typically use a spoon to drip my ganache down the sides and then pour some in the center and spread it around. Uh, you can use a Ziploc bag or a piping bag if that's easier for you, if that helps you have more control over the ganache, uh, whatever works best for you. Then you'll pour it on top as seen here and spread it around to the edges. So now we're gonna pipe on the ruffles on top. A lot of people will tend to do a swirling motion with their wrist, but if you notice there, I'm barely swirling the bag. I'm just applying firm pressure and slightly shaking my hand as I'm pulling the bag upward. That's what helps give you those beautiful looking ruffles. Now you just have to add your favorite kind of sprinkles and you are all set. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more baking how-to videos.